this might sound like a dumb question, but why is race such an important issue for you? Why do you speak up about this? Uh, I'm black. I grew up in Chicago uh, in the 1950s and 60s. Um, part of my self-understanding and my identity derive from my origins and that experience earlier in life. Um, these communities of African Americans and the big cities that struggle with one or another issue are places that I know. Um, it's, it's these cultural and religious and other uh, aspects resonate with me. Uh, if you ask me to define myself, I will inevitably find myself talking about my race and my uh, identity as a black American. Not only that, I mean, I'm many things, but that would be one of the things that I would call attention to. But your question is well put, well taken, because, you know, there, there's an argument that, you know, come on, I mean, grow up, get over it, let get past it. I mean, I'm brown, you're black, she's yellow, they're white. What the heck? That's superficial. That's, there's nothing real deep there whatsoever. Uh, that's a kind of superstition, you know, that's kind of belief in something that's not real. Uh, we should transcend it. I talk about it all the time at the podcast about growing beyond the kind of narrow confines of, of racial identity as the be all and end all. But the, the narrative and the history and the culture of African Americans is a real thing and uh, a sense of uh, the meaning of life that finds some connection up to those things for an individual born as I was into that community is perfectly defensible. It seems to me there are other examples that one could give. You can think about Jewishness or you could think about uh, Irish or Italian ethnics or mm -hmm. religious, uh, you know, Catholics or something like that. And that would be a part of a person's identity, not the whole sum and substance of it, but certainly something worth affirming. And, it's something like that. And how do you feel these conversations have been going recently in America, race conversations? Oh, I mean, we're in deep trouble. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I think that I want to give one concrete example, the police and um, the maintenance of order and crime and uh, police brutality. Michael Brown, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter. So here's what I think. What I think is that the um, character of the racial reckoning this summer of 20. 20, um, Floyd, George Floyd, <sighs> exposed the um, difficulty that we have in the country with dealing honestly and effectively uh, with the problems of racial inequality and disparity. I mean, I think the fact that twice as many whites as blacks are killed by police every year is pertinent. I, I think that the idea that it's open season this is what the attorney Ben Crump, who represents uh, families of people who have been killed by police and does so very effectively. Uh, that's what he calls it in his book, open season. It's open season on black people. I think that's a, uh, I'm not gonna call it a lie. Uh, it's a hyper, hyperbolic exaggeration of the actual circumstance. Um, I think if I want to talk about crime, punishment, violence in American cities, I don't want to see that conversation proceed in racial terms. I want to see it proceed in human terms. Uh, I, I think there's a huge downside to the racialization of that kind of conversation. Uh, I think the idea that the United States of America is a white supremacist um, racist uh, nation founded on 
uh, slavery and genocide, that idea in the 21st century um, is wrong. I mean, profoundly wrong and and unhelpful. And yet I can see the um, uh, interest that are built up around framing America's serious problems in those terms of flourishing uh, those interests. Um, I mean, I, I said this, I, I had a piece in Quillette, uh, unspeakable truths about race in America. I said, what, what's going on with the family? How are black men and women interacting with each other and reproducing and uh, the children and how they're being raised and what's the structure of home life? And I say, you know, seven and 10 kids born to a black woman or a woman without a husband. And I say, this is a monumental social uh, failure on, in the uh, nature of our communal life. Uh, things like that. I say, you look at the differences in the academic achievement and the cognitive functioning of these populations. I had Charles Murray on the show to talk about this. These are real things. I say, look at the violence. You, you want to, you, you think black lives matter? Then, you know, going from 10,000 to 20,000 homicides in a, in a year uh, ought to at least uh, attract your attention. You ought to at least have something to say about that. That's an elephant in the room that you're going to ignore. Believe me, the rest of America can see it. They can see it in Chicago. They can see it in Philadelphia. They know what's going on. They don't go downtown at 10 o'clock at night. They're not willing to go into a restaurant and come out after a few drinks and stumble to their car uh, after dark because they're afraid somebody's going to carjack them or somebody is going to rob them or worse. Um, and so on. And I'm saying, you have nothing to say about that. And moreover, I, I, I think the political interests are uh, to promote this sort of thing. Uh, take the Georgia election integrity law that was passed in the law. The president of the United States called it Jim Crow 2.0. Major League Baseball canceled their all-star game in Atlanta to punish the state because the state was a racist bastion. All of that was simply false. It was false. It was in the Democrats' interest to frame it that way, but it was false. Um, okay, there's another side to this. Are the Republicans trying to make hay by pointing to crime and implicitly suggesting that there's a racial issue there? Yeah, yeah, that's going on. The well is being poisoned, I think. So I have, I have uh, great concerns about that.